Um, next, we have an exciting presentation on how to cook a heart healthy meal. It is so important that we eat heart healthy foods and continue to take care of our bodies. Today's cooking demonstration is being sponsored by Western Sky Community Care, a longtime supporter of the American Heart Association of New Mexico through financial support, volunteerism, and serving on the AHA New Mexico board. Western Sky Community Care is committed to providing solutions for Medicaid beneficiaries throughout New Mexico. Western Sky Community Care, a wholly owned subsidiary of Centene in partnership with the New Mexico Human Services Department. Throughout New Mexico, Western Sky Community Care partners with physicians, specialists, hospitals, and other providers such as pharmacy and vision to ensure that each member receives quality health care. With us today, we have Dr. Lewis Allen Frank, a chef, and Chef Walter Whitewater. Dr. Lewis Ellen Frank is Kiowa and Sephardic, a Santa Fe, New Mexico based Native American chef, a Native foods historian, culinary anthropologist, educator, photographer, organic gardener, and a James Beard Award winning cookbook author for her book, Foods of the Southwest Indian Nations. She is the chef and owner of Red Mesa Cuisine, a Native American catering company specializing in the revitalization of ancestral Native American cuisine with a modern twist. Dr. Frank has spent over 30 years documenting and working with the foods and life ways of Native American communities in the Southwest. In 2020, she was the recipient of a local Hero Allah Award, which recognizes an exceptional individual for the work they do to create healthy, innovative, vibrant, and resilient local sustainable food systems in New Mexico. And I want to also introduce Walter Whitewater. He began cooking professionally in 1992 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He is also a chef at the Red Mesa Cuisine. Chef Whitewater has appeared on numerous food TV network cooking shows featuring foods of the Southwest and a recently released video on Native American cuisine from a series entitled In Real Life. Chef Whitewater worked on the James Beard Award winning cookbook, Foods of the Southwest Indian Nations with Chef Frank. He traveled with Chef Frank as part of the United States Department and Consulate General's Culinary Diploma Diplomacy Program to Ukraine. And that was in 2013, and United Kingdom in 2015, and Russia in 2016, where the two chefs promoted indigenous foods of the Americas through the culinary arts. Chef Whitewater was the first Native American chef to cook at the James Beard House in New Mexico in New York City. He won the James uh, Lewis Award in 2008 and BCA Global for his work as a Native chef. He is very active in using ancestral Native American foods for health and wellness in Native American communities. I will hand it over to Chef Frank and Chef Whitewater. If you have questions for the chef, please type in the chat and we will address after the presentation. Thank you. We can't hear you. I have to get you unmuted. Okay. Um, yes, great. We can hear you now. Oh, you went off again. Can you guys hear us now? Okay, yes. great. Can you just Perfect. spotlight our video? Yes, you're on. Okay, and can you spotlight our video? 
we'll take you off the um, share screen. Yes, please. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, can you stop sharing your screen? Thank yeah. you. Hi, everyone. We're uh, just so honored to be here as part of this wonderful Go Red Heart Healthy Conference. And uh, we're going to make a very easy, uh, accessible ingredient stew today. Uh, and we're going to serve it with some no fry fry bread. So we're going to take that same fry bread dough. We're just not going to fry it. We're going to show you how to grill it uh, so that um, we don't have that uh, oil on it. And it's going to be a little less uh, in fat. So today we're going to be using beans and corn and squash or corn beans and squash, which is also called the three sisters. And I have some beautiful beans and some corn here. Walter, uh, Chef Walter, who's filming, is just going to show you. Today, we're going to be using the pinto bean and the kidney bean. These are two very healthy beans. But there are some other indigenous beans that are very, very good for you. Uh, beans are uh, amazing. And if you're not eating beans, I really want to encourage you to get more beans in your diet. We have an Anasazi bean, which is an ancestral bean right here and a tepary bean, which actually originates with the Tohono O'odham. Uh, so it's a very drought tolerant bean. And here's a, a brown version of that same tepary. And beans are an excellent source of fiber. They're high in protein. They're low in fat. They have vitamin B6, potassium, magnesium, iron, calcium. They're a slow release food, which is good for diabetics. They have, are good for blood pressure. They improve your cholesterol levels and they help maintain a healthy gut. We also have some native corn. This is our traditional corn. And corn, of course, is not only a very nutritional food for uh, native people, and it's in our ancestral uh, DNA and our ancestral diet, but corn is also a, a very spiritual food. It's medicine. Uh, we are connected to corn. It is the indigenous grain. I know Dr. Reese said wheat was introduced. Absolutely true. So this is what we call a pre-contact or an ancestral food and um, also has lots of nutrients. Squash, uh, we're going to be using zucchini today. Uh, the zucchini, very easy to get. You can get it all year and it's usually very inexpensive, high in fiber, loaded with antioxidants, also rich in manganese, and manganese boosts your bone strength and helps the body, the body's ability to process fats and carbohydrates, uh, high in vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin B6, uh, as well as folate, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. So squash is a superfood. We want to try and incorporate uh, more of that into our diet. We're also going to be using chili uh, here in New Mexico, actually, most of you probably know this, maybe some of you don't, but our state question is red or green. And really that state question is asking, do you want red or green chili? Chilies have lots of medicinal qualities. Uh, they have vitamin C. One green chili has the equivalent in vitamin C of six oranges. Chilies are antifungal, antibacterial. They can be used topically to help arthritis or muscles, aches and pains in an ointment and they release endorphins in the body. So this uh, is also really important. So the stew, which is gonna be uh, up on the website and a photo of it, I'm gonna show you how we would plate it today, uh, is gonna to include some basic ingredients. We're gonna be using chopped onion, some garlic, and Chef Walter and I like to blacken our garlic. I'm gonna just turn my pan on in the back so it gets nice and hot. Uh, and when we blacken the garlic, it just makes the flavor a little less pungent. Uh, we're gonna be using green bell pepper, zucchini. We, at this time of year, have frozen corn kernels and we prefer frozen uh, to canned because canned, they start to add uh, salt and maybe preservatives. And then beans, we have our kidney beans and our pinto beans. Um, I slow cooked them overnight last night, but if you didn't have access uh, 
to that. You could also use the Instapot or a pressure cooker. Uh, you could always use canned, but remember with canned, it has salt. So you wanna rinse those beans before you use them. And then we're gonna be using canned tomatoes. I, I don't know if any of you out there still do this, but I love to can. Uh, so I can tomatoes every year. So I have my own canned tomatoes. Uh, we use the heirloom canned tomatoes uh, locally grown um, in a lot of our dishes. And then we're gonna be using Mexico red chili. Uh, we're also gonna be using some thyme and then a hand harvested oregano. And this oregano grows in the mountains uh, around Santa Fe and other parts of our state. Uh, actually, it's the descendant, so this is wild, uh, of um, what is now being called Mexican oregano. So this is just a local company, Mexican oregano, you should be able to get in any of your uh, supermarket in the, the Latin section. Uh, and it's also inexpensive. And also, you know, our herbs have nutrients. Uh, Walter and I really try and bring in that, that thought process that food is our medicine and, and we're gonna uh, make the stew. We're gonna make the stew today without meat, uh, but you could always add that if you wanted to. But I just wanna show you how to incorporate more vegetables, more plants into your diet and make them taste good because sometimes it's hard to make them taste good. And then I have some bean juice and I'm gonna talk about the bean juice when we get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna saute our onion and garlic and Chef Walter's just gonna follow around here. And uh, what we're doing is we wanna put our heat medium high to high and we wanna take our chopped onion. And you know, one of the things that I just wanna tell all of you while uh, you're cooking is you notice that we have everything prepped, everything already cut, much easier to get everything ready from the recipe and then just start to cook it. Because if I start to cook the onion, I don't have the garlic or the zucchini cut, then I've got to go back and that disrupts the cooking process. So we're going to go ahead and add our onion. And this is a very easy stew. It's going to take uh, a short amount of time to make. And then what we're going to do is start to caramelize those onions. So that may seem like a scary chef term, but it's not. Caramelizing just means that the onions are gonna to start to turn brown. As they turn brown, it softens the flavor. And so that's what, uh, as chefs, we refer to as uh, caramelizing. So you're just gonna watch those onions. First, they're gonna get clear, and then they're gonna to start to caramelize. So the next thing that we're gonna add is our chopped garlic. I'm gonna add that to my, uh, pot here and let that start to uh, cook. And um, then we're gonna get our other ingredients ready. So I always say, what's on deck, Walter? And what's on deck uh, is what are we gonna put in next? And the next thing we're gonna put in is our green uh, bell pepper and our zucchini. But I wanna just talk about, so I slow cooked my beans last night. And when I slow cooked my beans, I added extra water and I added extra water and here you can see that water, which has juice. We call this bean juice. So the bean juice has flavor. Uh, it also has nutrients. And so we take that juice and instead of using water or a stock, we're gonna use that and then it keeps it uh, inexpensive, but we also get flavor and nutrients from that bean. So I have two kinds of bean juice that I'm gonna be using today or bean broth, if you wanna say, and uh, that's gonna add some really nice flavor to this stew. So the next thing we're gonna add is our zucchini. And we're just gonna give this a stir. And we're just getting those vegetables cooked, but we don't wanna overcook them. We wanna have some texture uh, to the vegetables. And so we're not overcooking. You'll notice I'm always ready with the next vegetable. So uh, the next thing that we're going to be adding is our zucchini. I cut the zucchini into small pieces. Uh, these are about one quarter to one half inch in diameter. And that's going to get added next. And we're going to give it a stir. So see, very easy and all of these ingredients uh, accessible. 
and inexpensive. You can get these at any time of year. Uh, and so we want to make sure, uh, you know, like Dr. Reese said, these are all not packaged. Uh, these are all ingredients that were eaten by uh, our ancestors in the past and are very healthy because of the nutrients they supply and also the flavor, right? So if we think back in time, I'm going to get my herbs ready to go here. Uh, corn, beans, squash, chili, tomato, and potato were a really good part of what I call the magic eight. Uh, eight ingredients that Native people gave to the world. And the six that I just mentioned, uh, a good foundation uh, because of the flavor and nutrients uh, uh, for a heart healthy diet. So after your zucchini cooks, we're going to add our tomatoes and then we're going to add uh, our spices. And then the last thing we're going to add is our beef. So I'm just going to, so any can of tomatoes, if you can get a tomato that doesn't have salt, I would recommend that. We want to control our salt. So as chefs, we like to add our salt. And the salt we're going to be using today is a mixture of kosher salt and Zuni salt. So Zuni salt is our indigenous salt uh, here in New Mexico. And we actually uh, trade or were gifted from our Zuni friends some of this wonderful salt. So I'm going to add my canned tomatoes. And we're going to give it a stir. Oh, you can hear that sound. And we're starting to get smells of these wonderful flavors. So the last things I'm going to add are the beans. But before I do that, I am going to add a little of this is the wild oregano. You can also add to the oregano. I'm just going to take use these large wild leaves. and it in our hand and then sprinkle that into the stew and then we're going to add a little bit of thyme now what chef Walter and I buy fresh thyme and we dry it ourselves it's much cheaper than buying thyme we just put it in a little jar says thyme so you can buy fresh thyme but you usually can't use it all uh and or you could grow a little in your kitchen right your window uh kitchen garden and then we just have this is Leo he's one of the farmers that we work with. This is a mild red chili uh, and we're going to add some of that and then we're going to give it a stir and look at that beautiful color that's starting to happen here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our frozen corn and we're going to add our cooked pinto beans. They have to be cooked. And then we're going to add our cooked kidney beans. So see how easy this is. And then we're going to give it a stir. Always giving a stir. You never want it to burn. My heat is still medium. Okay. And we're going to bring this to boil. Now we're going to add our juice or water. So we want to add some juice. And you want, I like my stew juicy, but not too juicy. See that? Look at that beautiful color already. See that broth? Do is turn that stew down and let to reduce uh, for anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes. The longer it reduces, the better it's going to be. But you don't want to overcook it too much uh, for those vegetables. So what I'm going to do is just move this. And I'm going to show you the next thing. And uh, Chef Walter made some uh, dough. Um, we're going to uh, use uh, fried bread dough. So what we did, and I saved a little so I can show you guys what we did here. Uh, this is just regular fried bread dough that's been sitting. So this is the unbleached wheat flour. But to make it even healthier, we added our traditional blue corn. And so I'm going to start with that. This is the blue corn fried bread dough. Uh, and we'll make sure you guys have recipes. And I'm going to be using this little grill. And I'm going to put the grill over the flame. And then what I'm going to do is roll this out. So let's take a look. 
take a, I'm going to put a little bit of flour down on my counter, take that dough, put flour, and then I'm going to roll it into, and you know, it's hand done. So I know there's probably some grandmas out there that are thinking, she's not doing it by hand. We have permission from the grandmas. We asked our grandmas, we asked Walter's grandma. So you could do it, but it's quicker for us to do it with a rolling pin. So uh, for those of you that do this by hand, forgive us if we're breaking that part of tradition. Uh, so we're gonna just take our dough and we, we like to make these small for portion reasons, right? So we wanna have a nice small portion and then we're just gonna cook that bread just like you would a fried bread, but we're grilling it. So if you didn't have a grill, you could also use those racks that you dry cookies on. Perfect, just put it over the flame. Uh, you could also use a cast iron pan that you seasoned, but not oil, and uh, grill it in a dry seasoned cast iron pan. And uh, I of course have some uh, that's done already, and I'm gonna show you guys how to plate this. But what's fascinating about this process is the bread starts to bubble and it starts to bubble just like it would if you were frying it and that's what's so cool you can start to see those little bubbles and so those little bubbles are what is telling you that the dough is cooked see the flame underneath and that it'll be time to turn it and uh we have some that we made uh this morning and I'm going to just show you uh, the chef's secret. So we actually have a basket. And in the basket, we have our bread. So this is the blue corn bread. And what we do is we put a plastic bag. We don't want the bread to touch the plastic. We don't want the bread to touch the plastic because we don't want to eat any of those plastic fumes. So we put in a clean towel. and uh our bread and look how beautiful that blue corn bread is so i'm going to just put the basket over here and then i will roll out one of the other just to show you guys okay put that in and when you cover that it'll just keep it warm so here's our regular fried bread dough so again you're going to make a ball oh ping pong golf ball size put a little flour and then we're going to use our rolling pin and the same thing we're just gonna take that and put it so the corn actually adds more nutrients uh it does have a little flour but um it's a little healthier so we really like to do the blue corn so we're gonna put that and then again we have a basket the basket you can see it's been keeping our bread warm so plastic bag on the outside and then we can open that and inside we have delicious grilled bread and Walter's very proud. He wanted to make sure I showed you. He actually put a little uh, herb that cilantro in there. It actually herbs uh, in there, but that's his beautiful, look at the beautiful breads, okay? So let's take a look at this last bread here. And this bread, you see the bubbles. So those bubbles are telling you time to turn it. And then we turn it over and it's a beautiful grilled uh, bread um, that you can eat that's not fried, making it uh, a little more heart healthy uh, and um, better for you, right? And uh, not that much difference. So I'm gonna take my stew and I'm gonna get a ladle. I have a stew cooking classes, of course, are always magic. Just add a little more broth, there we go. And so this stew was cooking early this morning and look at that beautiful color, vegetables. So let us show you how we would plate this. So, and then you can serve it with the bread. So here I have my delicious stew, lots of vegetables, lots of nutrients. I'm gonna put that in my bowl here we have our corn we have our zucchini look at that let me just wipe that edge and then what we like to do and we're uh walter and i you know e even if you're just cooking for your family we think that making the food beautiful and putting 
lots of love into it uh, is something that's important. So this is just uh, an herb that I'm growing on my windowsill. And And uh, then what we can do is we can take a piece of our bread. You could use either the blue corn uh, or you can use the other. So uh, again, you know, what do you have access to, right? Um, or you can use the uh, regular flour, which I think most of you probably have in your kitchen. Um, and then, or you could serve one of each. And so there is our beautiful, dish that has lots of flavor, lots of nutrients. Um, and you want to season uh, with the um, salt. So do use salt to taste, but use uh, salt sparingly. We don't want to use too much salt because uh, again, salt, uh, something that can affect uh, your blood pressure. So especially in men, but uh, women as well. I think as a woman, when I eat too much salt, my, my ankles swell. So uh, I get edema. So I, I try and limit the salt to a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, uh, do that to taste. And we made a delicious stew in short amount of time. So we're going to open it up to questions. Uh, you will have the recipe. Um, and it's just been such an honor for us to be here today. Um, as part of this conference, this is really important. Uh, I think the more uh, fruits and vegetables and um, grains um, that you can add into your diet, uh, the better. And I just want to thank the Physicians Committee and Sun Life Financial. Uh, they helped us become a, a part of this. Um, we have more recipes. We actually have some brochures and some ideas uh, at nativepowerplate.org. If you want to look up under Native American Resources, uh, for ideas of how to incorporate more uh, plants and some healthy foods uh, into your diet. So um, let's open it up to questions. I think Chef Walter is going to come around uh, and um, we'll answer your questions. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Frank and Chef Walter White. Uh, that looks delicious. I'm sure all of us are going to the to the cabinet to see what we can do uh, to make lunch coming up here shortly. So um, we have a few questions. Um, what is the serving for this? Um, I'm not sure if that's serving size or what 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 exactly it, but also um, this might be too specific, but how could this be adapted for those on dialysis? if possible, or any alternatives? Okay, so that, that's a great question. And, and some of that question really may have to go to uh, outside of what we do to your health practitioner or to Dr. Reese. Um, what I, I can say is the serving size for us is this size bowl, which is about six to eight ounces of stew. Um, when we don't have uh, meat in it, we don't limit what we eat. We, so Walter and I sometimes eat two bowls uh, because there's not that many calories and there certainly is very little fat in this. Um, in terms of dialysis, uh, I don't have a definitive answer. I think that's a great question and I would work with your uh, health practitioner. Um, I know on dialysis, sometimes you can't have beans. Um, so then we would have to adapt that recipe uh, to some of the ingredients that you can have uh, while you're on dialysis. So we would just have to adapt that recipe and, and really work with our health practitioners. But uh, if you're not allowed to have beans, you could do the onion, the garlic, the zucchini, the sweet corn, and the red chili, and that would still make uh, a delicious stew. You just wouldn't have the beans. Maybe you could use your hominy corn in that. So mm -hmm. again, we'd have to check to see what uh, you're allowed to have on that uh, uh, for dialysis patients. But great, great question. Thank you. Um, another question coming through, uh, can we use an air fryer for the fry bread? You probably could, and that's another great question. Um, we don't have an air fryer. Uh, I think we asked Santa for Christmas. It just didn't come this year, <laughs> maybe because of COVID. Uh, but I know a lot of you have air fryers out there, so you'd have to test 
Um, we've only grilled the bread, but if we get an air fryer, that is something we would definitely try. I know other people are doing things like that, uh, but we don't have one, so we've never tried it. Great, great question though. Wow. Yeah, air fryers are very popular now, so um, you're gonna have to get one because yes. they, are, they are amazing. <laughs> Uh, so another question, where can I get that grill um, that you're using for the stove? Oh, right, so the grill, um, we're actually, uh, there's two places right now. We're going to, we're, uh, uh, we're working on trying to get them wholesale so that we can uh, offer them to uh, all the people that we cook with. Right now, uh, we're not able to. The only place that's selling them uh, is the Santa Fe School of Cooking, but look on our website because we're gonna try and get these and uh, get uh, at the best price we can so we can pass that on to all of you. Uh, otherwise, uh, it retails at the Santa Fe School of Cooking. Um, they do ship and they have it on their website in their store. Uh, but we're gonna try and get some and offer it uh, through uh, our website, which is uh, redmesacuisine.com. We have some foods on there because a lot of people want uh, some of the foods that we always cook um, and the grill is almost ready to be on there. Uh, we're working on, on uh, acquiring them. Awesome. Um, what are your recommendations on salts? Salts? Yes. So, you know, salt is a really uh, interesting thing. Um, we no longer use iodized salt. Iodized salt, of course, was introduced uh, into the general populace because uh, there were some health concerns from uh, not enough iodine. So that's how iodized salt got in. We don't use that because the iodized salt actually sticks to the food and makes it, you need more. So we use either kosher salt or we love earth salts. That's why we use the Zuni salt. Um, and so uh, when we get the Zuni salt, let me just show you guys, uh, it comes in large crystals, large crystals. And we take it and we put it in a, a coffee grinder or a spice grinder so it's fine. And we mix it with kosher salt. Sometimes Walter uses a pan, you know, or a little okay. mortar and pestle, yeah, to grind it. Um, but any earth salt, so Himalayan salt is a good salt. And you know, in the past, in our ancestral past, we got lots of nutrients from earth and sea salts, right? Um, and we also got natural salts from our water. But the majority of our water now filters out all of what, what, hard, what is hard water? Hard water is uh, mineral, mineral water. So when we filter out those minerals, we do need to add some of those back in. And that's why we prefer the earth salts, the sea salts, and of course our favorite Zuni salt, but the Zuni salt uh, is not available um, uh, commercially. You have to get to know or trade or be gifted. Uh, so a, earth, a good earth salt would be certainly the Himalayan, uh, lots of sea salts available, they're inexpensive. And again, bringing back some of those uh, minerals. So if you get large crystals, just grind it or use a mortar and pestle or a spice grinder. Uh, Walter uses the bottom of a pan, right, on a flat surface. So uh, we do like small amounts of salt, uh, but a salt that has uh, the minerals and nutrients. Good, good question, guys, great question. Awesome. And uh, next we have, if you would use meat in this dish, what kind would you recommend? And that's another great question. So we would use, we would go back in our ancestral tradition and use uh, one of our wild meats. Uh, bison would be good. Elk would be good. Um, venison would be good. Would you use ground lamb? Of course, Walter. For me, back home, what I do when I make this, you know, a lot of... Um, different tribes, and especially with the Diné uh, Navajo people, they use a lot of that um, steamed corn. I'd add into that. Maybe that's something that you, um, people can do. And that's just a, another way to, to bring up, a, a, do another notch with the, with the flavor. And what so about if you were gonna use a meat, what would you use? Turkey. Oh, ground turkey would be yeah. another very lean. Yeah, and that's native. So we really try and stick to what were our native meats that are lean? Lamb, you know. uh, yeah, yeah, the ground lamb. Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. Very good, guys. Good. And uh, it looks like that's all the questions we have for you. Thank you both so much, uh, Chef Frank, Chef Walter. 
Ooh. white, white water. <laughs> I, get, I know, you know, he gets not, that a lot, guys. So there is not, a wall of white in the tournament TV show. In, yeah. in, in, in Albuquerque. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. not, not to get confused with uh, Breaking Bad star uh, Walter White. This is the right. original chef Walter Whitewater. Oh, yes. Thank, yes, thank you so much for being with us. Everyone had nothing but great comments uh, about your recipe and about you both. Um, so thank you again so much for, for being with us. Thank you thank for you. having yeah, us and you. we want everyone to be healthy. Uh, so um, we're always here. Feel free to reach out and uh, we're just honored to be a part of this. Thank you all so much. And your website again, Red Mesa? Uh, RedMesaCuisine.com and our email would be on there. So you can always post a question or reach out to us. Uh, we've dedicated our lives to using ancestral foods for health and wellness. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're here for you and always available uh, to help you in any way that we can. Yes, thank you so much. And we'll be sending out uh, this specific recipe um, to everyone that registered. We'll be sending it out uh, via email.